Our friend Adam messaged and asked this, I'm having difficulty understanding layers, masks and smart objects and how to use them in conjunction with each other. Do you have something explaining this? Well, I do have now. Hey Adam, what's up? Thanks a lot for your question. You actually asked three questions, so let's break it down first. Number one, what are layers? Now here's the thing, layers are layers. Now that's what it is. Layers are layers. Onions have layers. Humans have layers. We all have layers. Now, in terms of Photoshop, layers are nothing but stack of papers stacked just above one another. Now, layers can be transparent. They can be translucent. They can be opaque. They can even be projective. That's something that you decide. It's basically nothing but stack of materials stacked one above another. Now then we have the background layer. Now we'll come back to background layer in a second. Now let's understand layers first and then let's understand transparency. So to create a new layer, you click here. To create one more new layer, you click here. Okay, let's come back to layer one and let's draw something simple, a blob. Now let's come back to layer two and let's draw maybe a blue blob, right? So let's turn off the background layer. Now what are these checker box? These checker boxes are literally, inside quotes, literally nothing. Now these represent literally nothing, which means that these areas are transparent. Now if you save this document in a PNG format, this will be saved as transparent, which means that if you import it into another image, only these blobs will be imported without white background. Now if you save this as a JPEG, it will be saved with a white background. Make sense? No? Now, for example, if you save these two, if you just turn off the background layer, if you save these two and you import it into other image, it will be something like this, right? So it's nothingness. And now the stacking order. This is the order in which it is stacked. Now you can change the order by dragging it down here and there it is. This is above, this is below. Now this is above, this is below. Now that's what layer is. Now what is background layer? Well, background layer is a layer which is in the background and it is usually more often than not locked. Why is it locked? Well, for the same reason why you had paper clamps when you used to write exams. You have written exams, right? You already have written exams and I suppose you have. So when you were given those answer sheets to write your paper, you were, you used to carry those boards, right, to clamp your papers down to write it. Why? So that it doesn't move. You also have paper weights. Why? So that the paper doesn't move, so that the background paper doesn't move. And above it, you paint with the brushes or you write with the pen. You do whatever you want, different layers. But the background layer, but the background paper is always clamped down so that it doesn't move. Now, if I accidentally just do this, 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 nothing happens, right? Nothing happens. It shows an error called could not use the move tool because the layer is locked. And if I let go of the background layer and make it as a normal layer, I just click in here, click on the lock and it becomes layer zero. Now you can move it. Now you don't want this to happen, right? You just don't want this to happen. So that's why more often than not, the background layer is locked. So that's, uh, so that about background layer. Now I talked about layers being opaque, they being transparent, they being translucent. So what are these things? Now this is completely opaque, like a thick paper. Now if you want, it to get a little transparent, you can decrease the opacity. Now watch, it's kind of a see-through. You can see through it, right? If you decrease the opacity to zero, it becomes totally invisible. If you increase the opacity to 100, it becomes totally visible. Now that's what it is. Now here's another thing. There's one more pretty thing called blend modes, which allows you to have opacity on steroids, which allows you to make some parts of the image invisible, some parts of the image visible which is interesting. Now to have that, to show you that, let's open up some layers. Let's open up some images actually. So let's open some brick images. So let's open say this one. So let's wait for the image to load. And by the way, this is the Pexels Photoshop plugin. I usually have talked about this in almost each one of my tutorials. Go ahead and download it. it allows you to download free stock photos from inside of Photoshop. Now, if I change the blend mode to say overlay, watch, we got that texture there, right? So what it is doing, that overlay is a kind of opacity crazy blend mode which deletes everything which is 50% gray and lightens everything which is lighter than 50% gray, darkens everything which is darker than 50% gray, then there is multiply, then there is, see what it has done, then there is screen, there's a lot of blend modes that you can try and play with.
So I have a separate video about blend modes which you can go ahead and check out right here where I go in depth about what each blend mode does and which are the four most important blend modes that you need to remember. So your question about layers, I hope that's answered. Just a quick recap, number one, layers are nothing but layers. Layers are a stack of materials just one above the other and you can decide whether it's transparent, translucent, opaque or projective. Okay, so these are the projective things, you control the opacity and that's pretty much it. Now, coming to masking. Now what is masking? If you want, for example, if you had changed the blend mode to overlay and you like the effect on the walls, right, but you don't want the effect on the windows, so what do you do? Yes, there is a way you can erase it, right? You can just, it's a smart object by the way, coming to your third question, but uh, we'll just convert this into a raster. Just ignore what I did right now, we'll get back to that, okay? Now, I know there's an eraser, you can take the eraser, where did it go by the way? Yeah, there it is, eraser, and you can erase this area very easily. But here's another thing, what if you want this back? What if you want this back? You can get this back, you can, you suppose you went 100 steps ahead and you want this area back, you cannot get this back, okay? So instead what we use, instead what we recommend to use is masks. So if you create a mask, this is a mask, and if you paint this area with black, this area goes away the same way. Now if you want it back, you can paint it with white back again. There we have it. So what is a mask actually? So let's, to see the masks, to see mask actually, press and hold ultra option and click in here. So that's what it is, white and black. Black are the areas where the layer doesn't show up. White are the areas where the layer shows up. Now if you paint in gray, for example, if you paint in something like gray here, it shows up just a little bit. If I get back to the layer, press and hold alter option and click on it again, it shows up a little bit. So you specifically have the idea. So when it's 100% black, it doesn't show up. Layer or the effect or anything, any adjustment layer, any layer, anything. If the if it's 100% black, it doesn't show up. If, if it's 100% white, it shows up. And if it's gray, it shows up partially. So that's what masking is. Now whether you're applying an effect to skin, whether you're maybe replacing a sky, masking is used every single wear. Why? Because it's kind of non-destructive, right? If you went overboard, instead of an eraser, you can always get that back. So that's what masking is. It's hide stuff or it makes stuff visible. For example, you wanted to change the color. So this is not exactly the way to do it. For example, you want to change the hue maybe to red, and you want this effect just over here. So, how to do it? You can also invert the mask, control a command I, which makes all of it black, which means that the layer, that the effect is not being applied anywhere. You can take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white, and paint in anything. Right, you can paint in anything, say hello. So, I know this is bad, but you get the idea, right? So, that's pretty much masking is. So, to see the mask, just a quick recap, to see the mask, alter option, click in here to see what you have painted, white are the areas that will show up, black are the areas which will not show up, okay? So that's what masking is. Now coming back to that brick image, coming back to that brick image which we just imported. And now what are smart objects? Your third question, just answer to your third question. Now smart objects are a kind of objects that allow you to edit them non-destructively. Since this is a smart object, you see a, an icon there, right? If, you, if it's not a smart object, if it's a raster, you can convert it into a smart object by right clicking on it and click convert for smart objects. Now another way of converting this into a smart object is clicking here and go to filter, convert for smart filters and click OK. That also converts this into a smart object. Now controller command T, if you make it small, hit enter. Controller command T, if you make it big again, very big, hit enter. If you make it small again, there, it doesn't lose any details. It has all the details it came with, right? So now if this was a raster image, if this was not a smart object, if I rasterize this, if I make it small, Photoshop burns the pixels when it makes it small. Now if you make it big, you lose everything. It's, watch. It's all lost, all the details are gone, right? So, smart object, 
always. Now, one other advantage of smart object is that you can apply as many filters as you want. For example, if this was a smart object, there are some filters which you can apply to smart object. For example, you apply it a blur, Gaussian blur, a little bit, and then you apply it maybe sharpen or something like that, maybe distort, whatever. So let's have some fun. Uh, maybe wave, just kidding. So, okay, it's applying the filter. Now here's the thing with this. You can change the values. This is a smart object. It's not burned down to the pixels. You can change the values anytime you want to go back to Gaussian blur, double click on this, click OK, and you can change the values of the Gaussian blur, click OK back again. Now if you want to change the value of wave, you can double click on it, you can go back again. So you can apply any filter from here or even any adjustments, image adjustments say you apply hue saturation there and there you have it, you change the hue and then you have it. You Anytime you want to change it, double click on it and you can change it. Isn't that interesting? Now, you can have as many stack of adjustments or filters as you want and you can even turn off and turn on them. And also, just as a bonus, these all adjustments come with a mask. So if you click on the mask and paint on areas with black back to masks, the effect won't be applied here in this specific area. To see the mask, press and hold alter option, click on it and there you have the mask. Press and hold alter option, click on back again, there you have the image. So that's basically the basics of layers layer masks and smart object. I hope this video helped you and if it did, I know you are subscribed. Make your friends subscribe to this channel. You gotta have to. This is a compulsion. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.